I'm Lawrence Gartel, and I am considered the father of digital art for over 47 years. I started out in Buffalo, New York, and I was working on analog systems, and I worked with a fellow named Namjoon Pike, the video artist, and he said to me, what are you trying to do? And I said, well, I am trying to make stills off of a computer screen because I believe that electronic imaging is going to take over painting. And this is in 1975, before the personal computer, before any devices, before anything. It was a massive room filled with electronics, knobs, buttons, wires. And Ray, I didn't know what I was doing at all, but I was smart enough to realize what I was doing was significant. So I have today to show you day one, hour one. The first time I ever touched a computer in 1975. I took a photo off the screen, I developed the film, and I have several images from that particular day, from that particular hour, from that particular moment. This is the birth of electronic art as far as I understood it to be. So from that point on, I never looked back. And what happened was, is that that was 1975. In 1980, I went to uh, a place in Redwood City called the Ampex Corporation, because I found out that they had a system and it was used by John Madden, who was calling uh, NFL plays. And he made an X and an O live on the screen and it showed where the running back would go over a video. And then you press the button and you got an eight by 10 Polaroid off of that. I wrote an article about my 20 minute experience on that system for Millimeter Magazine. And then the world knew that electronic imaging was totally possible. And from that, I went around the world and I had access to whatever proprietary systems were there. And I'm also reminded that I went to Los Angeles and I worked on the first Apple II computer. And I have a photo of that as well, which was really rather extraordinary. And then in 1981, I showed this work to the Museum of Modern Art. And they said, what is this stuff? I don't understand, what is this? And they said, well, is it, is it uh, well, what? And I said, it's a video drawing. They said, video drawing? Okay, so they included it in their collection. 1981, I was 25 years old. And when I think about it, it seemed almost normal to me to do these kinds of things. And then I showed it PS1 on, in uh, Long Island City with the Museum of Modern Art and PS1. And uh, it was rather extraordinary. So I just kept having these momentous occasions happen with my work. And along the way, you'd have to know that there were a million disappointments and a million people, I'm sorry, I don't know what this is. There was no like category for this. There was no like applications for grants or whatever. The, the medium did not exist. It did not have its place, I have to say. but. I went on to do extraordinary things in 1985. I taught Andy Warhol how to use the Amiga computer to make Debbie Harry's album cover. And consequently, in 2017, the director of the Luca Museums thought this was very significant that pop art moved into digital art. And he launched a show that went to 12 different museums. And I have a 300 page book that goes along with that called Warhol versus Gartel hip hop, which I will show you. I don't have that here, but um, I, I, I will show it to you. And, uh, and that was a major move. In 1989, I replaced Van Gogh's irises at the Joan Whitney Payson Museum. They took off the, uh, the irises and they sold it at Sotheby's for $53 million and they put my work up in its place. And people went, how could digital art, what is this? How could digital art replace painting? And it was very interesting that the, the director said, well, Mrs. Payson 
thought that Van Gogh's work was innovative. And, you know, we follow that, uh, that path of, of innovation. So that's why you're here. And, you know, that was almost like a, a too good of an answer because people just couldn't get it. And it was in every single newspaper and everything else that digital art was replacing uh, impressionism, really rather extraordinary. And in that year, my first book came out that Nam June Pike authored called Lawrence Gartell, A Cybernetic Romance. And nobody even knew what the word cybernetic was at that time. And there was work in there from the uh, uh, Smithsonian Institute collected a piece for the uh, Museum of American History. And, uh, you know, I was like kind of well on my way, I have to say. So, you know, one of the most significant things, of course, in 91 was my absolute Gartel ad for absolute vodka. This was the first digital ad ever for that uh, campaign. It was on the back of 300 different magazines, 300 million magazines like uh, Sotheby's Wired, which this is, Wired Magazine, New York Magazine, um, Art, and, Art and Antiques, Art and Auction, uh, Scientific American, New York Magazine. It was, it was really like everywhere. And it ran for 10 years and it ended uh, with Art Forum in September uh, 2001. And that's how it ended. So that was in 1991 to 2001. And then I had a show at the Joan Whitney Payson Museum in 1991 as well. And it was a full retrospective. And again, same thing. Nobody knew what digital art was. I had the first digital camera and I also have that with, I have everything. I have my first lock of hair from my, from my uh, uh, when my mother took me on Madison Avenue, uh, I still have my first original haircut. So I've kept everything. I have my baseball glove. When I was eight years old, I have everything that is significant and it's all around me. And, you know, I have to be going through boxes and finding everything. Nothing is really in a, in a complete orderly place. I, I need a museum very shortly in order to show all this, but Ray, what's really important to me is the story of art, the history of art. It starts with, of course, cave paintings, what they say was 40,000 years ago, and now they say it's 65 years ago, of course. It goes through every major moment, and of course, what am I gonna tell you? I am the last page in art history. Thank you. And, you know, I mean, my parents looking down, I told them I wanted to be an artist. They said, you picked the most difficult, you know, field to go into. I said, you know what? It's 99% impossible. But you know what? Why are we here on earth? And I was eight years old when I told my mom that. And I will tell you also, Ray, that I have the first books that were on my mother's coffee table, which were on Monet, Manet. Uh, Van Gogh, Picasso, uh, and all of that sort of like got to me. I don't know why it arrested me with, I was breathless out of, out of that work. And I just romanticized and my mother would take me to the Metropolitan Museum. She would take me to the Guggenheim Museum and she'd say, look at this work. Isn't this masterful Klee Kandinsky my God. And I went, oh, come on, mom. My work is so much better than this. And she slapped me on the, you know, what's wrong with you? Look at this beautiful artwork. I said, no, it's, it's beautiful. I, I, no question about it. But Lawrence Gartel will prove that he will get into the history of art. Wow. What a thing. What, what a thing. So what, what, what more can I possibly, you know, my, my own, like, you know, the famous line, at a Scarface, don't get high on your own supply. Well, I gotta tell you something. I've been high on my own supply for the last 40 something years. And what happens is I meet fabulous people along the way. I get inspired, I do things. And, um, you know, it's been a wonderful life because I feel like Hokusai, I'm just at 70 years old, he said, I'm just getting started. And I'm not 70 quite yet, but I gotta say that, um, I feel 
like I'm inventing all the time. And I, you know, I have some of my inventions. I don't want this to be a giant soliloquy because I want you to ask other questions, of course. But I have done extraordinary things like my book written by Pierre Restini, the most important, most prominent art historian in the world, wrote the introduction to my book and I could possibly read it, but it says just the headline. Wow, what a debunking eye cast by a man of today on the sham glamour of our time. What a beautiful thing. He speaks seven languages, but here's a picture of me, Pierre and Mimo Rotella at Biche restaurant in Milan, the original Biche. And I'm in the middle is uh, Mimo Rotella, uh, one of the greatest contemporary artists of the time in Italy. And the two of them are smoking a cigar and I'm being introduced into La Familia, into the family and out of respect, that's why I'm not smoking a cigar. Very interesting, very telling, but the best part, Steve Jobs commissioning my Think Different ad for Apple computer of which they had Golda Meir, Jackie Robinson, Jim Henson, Gandhi, Picasso, and myself, the only living artist to have a Think Different ad. And certainly the only computer artist to have this ad. So uh, those are some of the, uh, I guess, accolades, but going back to the past, how about this? How about a cover of a magazine from 41 years ago? This was done at a system in New York City on the video palette one. And what did they do? These guys made the first digital animation movie called Tron. And this was made on their system. And they would say to me, what are you doing here? I go, well, I'm just full. They just let me play because they didn't know what I was doing. But I was getting commissions to do covers like this. And I did them for years. And I have some from Japan as well that... Uh, they, they were totally outrageous and no one was able to do it. So now everyone can do it. So if everyone can do it, what am I supposed to do? How do I become or stay relative, right? You don't want to turn into a relic. You have to do. So I got involved and I made the Shashibo art cubes. And the more you have, the more you can make. And each one is connected to another cube and I can peel off, I can peel out a cube and work with it in different ways. Three dimensional cube, it can do many different things. You can make different 70 different shapes with 36 earth magnets to it. And uh, you know, it keeps people busy. This was done like during COVID, it really took flight. So, uh, I'm making more of these things and inventing more stuff with it. And uh, it's in every Walmart, it's in Target, it's in Barnes and Noble, it's in 38 independent stores, and it's the number one selling toy on, uh, on Amazon.